Hi, and welcome again to another online lecture for economics. We will be starting the third major unit of the course, and as you can see, it is called macroeconomics. So again, um, as you go through the PowerPoint and listen to the lecture, please take some notes over the main ideas and come to class with questions. And obviously, I'll be happy to answer those questions, and you also need to be prepared, prepared to answer some of my questions. All right, let's get started. So, first thing is, of course, the definition. When you think of economics, and specifically macroeconomics, um, you can kind of contrast it with what we just got done with micro. Micro was looking at economics on the small scale, how individuals, you and I, and businesses make economic decision, supply and demand and so forth. Now we're going to step back and look at, at economics from a much broader point of view, and that obviously is what macro is, the large view. And as you can see here, we're looking at what is the national economy. How is the national economy doing? So we're going to look at what we call a lot of term. we'll use the word aggregate a lot, which means the overall view of something. Um, so really we're looking at the US economy um, and we can also look at other countries' economies and see um, certain characteristics and kind of how they're doing and things like that. So that's the basic definition of macro. So there are several key questions which basically macroeconomics asks and answers, and I want to quickly go over those because they're very, very important. And basically these are the kind of questions what is what you can expect short answer questions on exams and such. The first is, and the most important is, do you have a healthy economy? Or what does a healthy economy look like? How, what are the characteristics of an economy that is doing well? Um, and it's a question that, you know, right now if you take a minute and you ask, do you think we have a healthy economy? And if so, what are you basing that on? Um, and there can be a variety of characteristics or elements that go into it. Um, a lot of people will throw out things like the stock market or something about the unemployment rate, um, you know, I don't know, home prices, things like that. So the question is, do you have a healthy economy and how do you, how do you measure that? What do you do to figure out how, how good your economy is really doing? And that leads to a second question. Uh, what should the role of the government be in the economy? Obviously, if it's unhealthy, uh, we have come to expect that the government will do something about it. Um, ever since the Great Depression, the government has had a system of tools that it uses to try to deal with economic problems. Um, nobody believes anymore that the government should just stand by and let the economy go, whatever, do whatever it wants without any sort of intervention. Um, that's just, it's too dangerous. To, there could be some very extreme negative consequences of that. So we don't live in what Adam Smith would say is a pure capitalist system where they, the market is completely controlled by consumers and producers. We do believe the government has a certain role. But that leads to the third question, which is how much involvement should the government have? What is too much? What is too little? And so really, it is a question of if you have a healthy economy, and then if you don't, what role should the government take? And we'll be going over, obviously, we'll be answering these questions in order. This whole first half of the unit will be about the first question, about having a healthy economy. And then we will shift over and look, what do we do if we don't have a healthy economy? Okay? So the first thing is, what is what are the acceptable or the characters of a healthy economy that, that economists and even politicians, both Democrats and Republicans, agree on? And there are three basic ones. The first one is what, as you can see, is called steady economic growth. And what that means basically is how much is a country producing in terms of its goods and services? How many things is it making? And what we're looking for is that we want this amount to grow over time. So if you look here, here's a pie chart. Imagine this represents the overall production of goods and services in your country, which by the way is known, as you can see here, is known as gross domestic product. And we will talk a lot more about that in a little bit. But let's imagine that this is gross domestic product for one year. We want to see, we want to see it getting bigger, as you see here on this pie chart to the right. What that means is, is mean that we're producing more goods and services and that way more people can buy more things or have more services. And that relates back to the economic dilemma. Okay, With the smaller pie chart, there's only a certain amount of goods and services everyone can have. The only way people get more in this one is if they take. So if the person in the blue took some from the green area, but that would mean the person in the green area would have less. The way to avoid that is by having the whole pie get bigger. That is basically what economic growth is. That's what steady economic growth looks like, that it gets bigger. And for our purposes, uh, we're going to want gross domestic product to rise between 3 and 5% a year. And we will go much more in depth in GDP in the next lecture, but this is just a brief introduction. Okay. The second 
characteristic of a health economy is low unemployment rate. Um, obviously, it is kind of common sense. It's logical if you think about it that we want people to have jobs. We want people to have work. That obviously leads directly to more economic growth, and obviously, people like having money to spend on things that they want and do things that they want. Um, just a few quick clarifications here. Um, right now, one thing I mean does not mean full employment, which some people would infer it as being zero unemployment. So that's never possible in an economy, and we don't expect that. As you can see here, if we have an unemployment rate of less than six percent, we consider that to be acceptable. Um, just to be clear, when we talk about unemployment, we always are talking about the number of people unemployed versus talking about people employed. So try to keep that keeps that straight and just focus on the unemployment. Okay. The third one is stable aggregate prices. And I should say that these three goals go in order of significance. So this is the least important of the three, I would say. Um, stable aggregate prices just means that basically the price for goods that you and I buy, in general, we know what they're going to cost. We're not going to see major fluctuations, either increases or decreases in the short term. Um, now, we all know that prices can go up. We've seen it with gas. They've gone down, and then they've gone up, and then they've gone down. But we don't see any extreme changes. Um, and that's what's important. That way, we can make our own economic decisions based on what we know prices are roughly going to be. And this goes for producers as well. Um, in an extreme case, what people have to do is they have to look at prices, then they have to go to their bank, literally withdraw what they think they need, and then race back to the store and purchase the product before the prices have changed. And that's a situation known as hyper uh, inflation, where prices are rising extremely quickly. Think of it like if all of a sudden school was going to start at different times. Uh, one day it just randomly started 20 minutes earlier, and then another day it started 30 minutes later. Um, it would be, it would drive you nuts trying to figure out what time was school going to start. That's kind of the same thing with aggregate prices. We want them to be relatively stable, so we kind of know what things are going to cost. Okay. Next, I want to introduce something called the business cycle. The business cycle basically just represents what happens to the economy over time. And what the economy does over time, as you can see from this graph, or this, 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 this yes, this graph, is that it, it has ups and downs. As it says, ebbs and flows. There are times when the economy is growing and doing really well, and there are other times when the economy is not doing well. And most of you know this, obviously, you've heard of recessions and depressions, and that obviously refers to kind of economic downturns. But this is what we've come to realize in from economic data, is that there's a natural up and down or ebb and flow of the economy. And we call that now the business cycle. Uh, a couple things that are real important about this business cycle are duration and intensity. What that means is these different ups and downs or ebbs and flow can last a long time. As it says, sometimes they can be very short, just months, or sometimes they can be years. And, and think about the Great Depression as one of those low points, and obviously that lasted almost a decade. So that's what it means by duration and obviously intensity the same idea that sometimes some of these areas um, can be very can have be significant can impact people significantly and be very stressful or very obviously good for people or it can be kind of very minor and almost un, not doesn't really affect people in a lot of ways but again it doesn't what this what i'm saying is the time that it lasts can be quite a variety and how significant or how much it impacts people can be can, there can be quite a range, um, and also the last thing is there are four phases of the business cycle, and you can see here they're they're listed for you: expansion, peak, recession, and trough. And I'm briefly going to go over each one and give you the characteristics, and also in terms of the economic goals, which ones are present and which ones are missing. Okay, and some of them will seem pretty obvious to you because um, you've probably learned about them, you just didn't know again about the economic terminology. So here we go. So uh, one last thing I should say about the business cycle. What we have learned over time is the business cycle, if you look at this picture, it is going up and down, the green arrow, right? There's ups, there's downs, there's ups and downs. But if you go from the first point to the last point, you obviously see that over time, the amount of growth in this economy has gone up. And that's exactly the point. This picture shows the economy going from almost, almost the beginning of the 1800s to just you know, 2009. And what you can see here, and I've highlighted in purple, is here's the general trend. There are ups, there are downs, this being the Great Depression, okay? But overall, our economy has grown. So historically, our economy, while it does have, in the short term, um, ups and downs, ebbs and flows, like the business cycle says, in the long term, our economy grows, has grown significantly. And obviously, we hope that that will continue in the future. There's no guarantees, but obviously, 
something's been working. Okay. Okay. So now to the fourth section. So first expansionary. Um, this is the one that people want to be in the most and stay in the longest. This is where you have economic growth. So you have steady economic growth. Um, unemployment is declining because um, it makes sense that if the economy is growing, people need to have opportunity to work. Um, and prices could potentially be rising, but really for the most part, they're pretty stable. Okay. Then comes the peak. This is sort of this is when the economy is doing the best it's going to do. This is where the, the uh, economic growth is kind of maxing out. Um, unemployment is at its, at its low point. All the factors of production are being used as, as much as they can. But what you're really starting to run into here is inflation because there's just no more resources to buy. There's no more people to hire. And so now it just becomes about a bidding war between who wants what product or what employee. So really, if you get to the peak, um, you start having the problems of inflation. And just like anything, you don't only, you only know you're at the peak or your best performance when you start declining. It's like if you went for a sprint and you were running and you're running as fast as you could, you only would realize that you've gotten your maximum speed when you start slowing down. So it's hard to know you're at the peak until you've passed it. That's followed by a word that most of you are comfortable with called a recession. And it is exactly what it says. Now you have the economic growth declining. You have unemployment rising. Prices are usually not a concern. Um, at this point, there's a possibility that they're falling, but really, for the most part, we're focusing on the rising unemployment and the, the decline in economic growth. So this is a recession. You hear this term used a lot in kind of the news and such, and it is exactly that. Things are not going well in the economy. And the last is a trough, or sort of the bottom of the recession. Of, oftentimes, this is called a depression, but obviously, economic growth is at its lowest point, um, even negative, and you can see that unemployment can be very high. In extreme cases, you can actually have what we call deflation, which means that prices are actually falling, which I know at some point as a consumer that might sound good, but the reality is it's not good. We don't want prices to fall. So this is at its worst when the economy is at its worst. But remember, we go through these ups and downs. Obviously, expansion is an up, peak being the top point, and then we start dropping down a recession, and then bottoming out is a trough. Um, but it's normal to go through this process. We go through these ups and downs all the time. Um, and what we're going to do next, we'll talk about each of the three goals in much more detail. And then we'll um, talk about how we address the problems if we don't have, if we're where we are, if we're at a recession or a trough or even at a peak. So that's it for now. Um, please, again, uh, go through and review. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them next time we have class. Thank you very much.